Hi, my name is Linda Parsons and I'm here today to help you with your very first chemistry lab on measurement. We realize that this lab has a lot of preliminary reading, but it's very important that you read and study this material. Some of the information presented in this lab cannot be discussed on this video due to the amount of time that we have. But it is important that you practice and master the, the mathematical operations that are presented in this lab because they will be used for the entire semester. First, let's take a look at the definition for measurement. A measurement determines the quantity, dimensions, or extent of some object in comparison to a specific unit. A unit is a definite quantity adopted as a standard of measurement, such as grams or meters. In your chemistry labs, you will be asked to measure substances in grams for weight, milliliters for volume, and centimeters for length. Some examples might be the weight of a compound used in an experiment. You could measure out 2.567 grams of potassium chlorate. This would be recorded on your report sheet as 2.567 G. Or if you use 15.10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution, then you would record this value as 15.10 ml. Or for the measurement of a length of a block, you might get 5.13 centimeters, which would be recorded as 5.13 cm. Measured values are not exact numbers. There is always some amount of uncertainty in every measurement. <clears throat> the instrument you use to find your measurement in the lab will determine the number of des decimal places that will be in your measurement. To illustrate this concept, let's look at some of the instruments you could use in the lab to measure with. Let's first of all take a look at two different balances in the lab. The first balance, we're going to weigh a block on. And as you can see, this balance reads 53.0 grams. This balance is capable of reading to a tenth of a gram, which means that our measurement is somewhere between, could be a little bit above 53.0 or a little bit below 53.0 grams. But our estimated number on this balance would be the zero digit. If we take this block and and use the other balance. On the second balance, you can see that the mass of our block reads 53.018 grams. This balance is capable of reading to three decimal places, but even on this balance, the eight, the last digit in our number, is still our uncertain digit. So our measurement can be just a little bit above 53.018 or a little bit below, 53.018. Now let's go to volume. For the measurement of volume, you can use a beaker, and you can see that the graduations on our beaker are in tens, 10, 20, 30, 40 milliliters. To get as precise a measurement as possible, I will estimate between the 20 and the 30 mark with my beaker and say that I'll estimate this is at about 26 milliliters for the volume of the liquid in the beaker. We can put this volume in a graduated cylinder and because this instrument is graduated to a milliliter can then be estimated to a tenth of a milliliter. So this reading would be read as 25 point four milliliters. And remember that that last digit is an estimate that I've made. We have two different rulers here also. As you can see with our first centimeter ruler, we only have graduations of one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. centimeters on this ruler. It's not graduated in between. So let's measure our block of wood. And I would say this reading is seven centimeters, and it's somewhere in between the seven and eight centimeter, which it looks like it's a little more than half. So let's call this seven point, I'm gonna estimate it as 7.6 centimeters with the 
centimeter ruler that I'm using right now. Okay, with the second centimeter ruler, the ruler you'll be using in class is graduated to a tenth of a centimeter. So there are graduations between the centimeter marks. So let's measure the block with this centimeter ruler. And I get a measurement of 7.36 with this centimeter ruler. So I've estimated the distance between the tenth of a centimeter, giving my reading to one hundredth of a centimeter. Another aspect of measuring is the dependability of the measurement, the precision and accuracy. The accuracy of a measurement is the agreement between the measured value and the accepted value. Precision relates to the degree of reproducibility of a measurement. We can show an analogy using a dartboard of precision and accuracy. <laughs> this first set of throws shows low accuracy and low precision. The darts are not close to the bullseye and are not close to each other. The second set of throws shows high precision but low accuracy. The darts are all close together, but not close to the bullseye. Remember that accuracy is the agreement between the measured value and the accepted value. This difference is called the error. Error is the measured value minus the accepted value. An error value can be a positive or a negative number and has the same unit as the measurement. A better way to see the, mag the magnitude of the error is to determine the relative error. Relative error shows how big the error is in proportion to the accepted value. Relative error is equal to the error divided by the accepted value. Usually this is expressed as a percent. So percent error would be the error divided by the accepted value times 100. Error and percent relative error show accuracy. Precision is the reproducibility or agreement of a group of ind independent measurements with each other. Precision can be determined by finding the deviation. Deviation is the difference between a specific measurement and the average of the set of measurements. This difference is always a positive number, so deviation is defined as either the measured value minus the average value or the average value minus the measured value, whichever gives you a positive number. The average deviation is the sum of all the deviations divided by the number of measurements. Average deviation equals the sum of the deviations divided by the number of measurements. Relative average deviation is the average deviation divided by the average of the measurement. It's usually also expressed as a percent. So the percent relative average deviation would equal the average deviation divided by the average of the measurements times 100. In this experiment, you will be measuring the four sides of a block marked A, B, C, and D and recording those on your report sheet. To measure your block, you'll line your ruler, the left-hand side of your ruler up with the left-hand side of the block, right on the zero mark, and then come across to the right-hand side and read where the block meets the ruler. In this case, it looks like it's about 7.21 centimeters. And then record that on your report sheet. You'll need to measure and record the other three sides of your block and then do the calculations required for your lab. There are two things I'd like to emphasize with this lab. The first is the importance of writing the unit of measurement with your measured value. 
always record the unit with your value. The second is the importance of mastering the information that the, that's in this first lab. It'll be important for you in future labs. Good luck.